Hello and welcome. This is my new tool. It is a MechPow laser cutter or engraver or whatever you want to call it. So let's get it open and see what it can do. Now frequent viewers of this channel may know I already have one. You may be asking yourself, why another one? Well, different things have different features. Well, it's kind of like, you know, a Suburban versus a, uh, I don't know, old minivan. Just both serve a purpose. Some may do it just a little bit better. Ah, the air pump. We'll dive into that in a bit. Well, it's assembled and ready to go. I installed the fitting here on the side. And what that does... plugs into our air pump, which is here. It's a, it's kind of an add-on unit, so it doesn't like, screw on anywhere. I kind of wish it would, but it doesn't. So we have uh, some hose, fits into that quick fitting. The other end fits onto our pump. The other end has fitting too. Anyway, the air pump should give it some nicer cuts, nicer edges. It won't leave as much as that charred or burnt look as uh, my other laser engraver slash cutter. So it's, it's a little bit better. But we have one more thing, which is this. It's an add-on, but it is a base or a honeycomb, which will give this thing a much, well, I've never had one. It should, it should give it a better cut. Because the laser isn't going to be reflecting off whatever's below it. It's going to go through the material. Should give us a better, easier, cleaner cut. We'll, we'll find out. We have these little pins here. They are kind of neat. Because it takes care of our workpiece hold down. We can use these little clips, put in our material. And we can you know, stagger them wherever we need to. Push them in. It's going to hold down our work. All in all, I think it's going to be a pretty good setup. Well, now the machine's all assembled and set up, I'm going to show you how to actually make the gasket. This is an outboard powerhead base gasket. It's a little little broken, so I've taped it back together. And it's it's fragile, but it's it's it'll work. I'm going to set that on the scanner, just like so. Now I also have a ruler here. This is for future use, in case, or in case I need it really. But it's basically just a little generic ruler with metric and uh, inches on it. So I'll just set that in there as well. Close the scanner and we'll scan it. Now I like to scan it as a PDF. I didn't always, I used to scan it as an image, but I realized PDF is a little bit better because it retains the image size. So like, let's say we wanted to print out a, just a sample on a piece of paper, it's going to match what we scan exactly as far as retaining the sizes of the image, where JPEG, I, who knows. So here's our gasket. That's uh, a little upside down, but that's okay. We're going to right click. Let's go ahead and do that again. Rotate counterclockwise, and now it's on the bottom. It doesn't matter, it's just looking at the ruler upside down probably would have driven me crazy for a little while. So let's make sure that's saved. All right, good. So let's open up uh, Inkscape. Inkscape isn't the recommended program. This particular laser engraver recommended to use Lightburn. Lightburn isn't free, where Inkscape, which I'll be using, is. So we're going to use Inkscape. So let's open up Inkscape. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do this, but I don't quite know what they are. So I'm going to open the PDF in Inkscape. Yeah, I'm not going to read this. Don't know what it does. And there is the scan of our gasket. If you notice, we have, you know, basically 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper here and our gasket laying in the center. 
And if we cared, we could use these rulers up top here to determine if it's going to match up. I've never had it not match up, so I stopped checking. I'm going to zoom in, which is shift and then the plus button. Get nice and close in this thing. So over here on the side, we have it looks like an old fountain pen. It says, uh, draw curves and straight lines. So that's what we're doing. So we're going to just kind of follow this gasket. Wherever there's a bump, I'm going to click it, start a new line. And then we we should we kind of go over, but I'll show you that in a bit. I'm going to draw a line there. I'll go to about here, there. This curve is going to be a little harder to follow. This may be confusing, but you'll you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. So the gasket kind of bends upwards. So I know it's hard to see that little tiny faint red line, but just bear with me for a minute. You'll see what I'm doing. So there's our outside. Now we can come over here on this top left, edit path by nodes. We can click that, and we have this little triangle pointer, and then we can bend our line to match the curvature of our gasket. Now the gasket's old and used, so it's not going to be perfect, but we can get it pretty darn close. And depending on where you put the pointer on the line is going to depend on where you can manipulate the bend. So this one actually right here may not need anything. Probably just leave that alone. So we'll make this little turn. We'll come out a little bit because it's probably what it did originally. We'll bend this line in. And that's, that's the start of that. All right, we got our perimeter done. Now it is time to do the circles. You can do it in whatever you want. I just figured we'll do circles. So I clicked on the circle button, and up here at the top, you can see a bunch of different shakes you can make. All right, so it should make a full circle. You got to click and hold. It's a little weird. Let's see, that's what I don't like about this program. When you're trying to make a normal circle, yeah, that'll work right there. circles. Now I'm no expert on this program. I've only used it, I don't know, eight times or so. But once you really kind of get into it, you realize it's really not that hard. Anyway, so we're trying, I'm trying to just look at the uh, scan of the gasket, determine where the holes originally probably were. Now this one, since it's an oval, it's going to be a little harder. So we're going to go back to our line tool, I think. And we're just going to draw a little box. That'll work. And then we'll go back to our manipulator. And we will make our oval. Yeah, that'll work. Let's do the inside perimeter. So we're going to have a line there, so we'll go sideways with it. Now this this right here, this spot, that's a little odd. It should just kind of make a little curve in, but well, we'll see. And then this, this is probably this little area where it comes out. I doubt that's supposed to be there. Like I said, the gasket probably just got crushed and it got exposed you know, pushed out right there, so I'm just going to ignore it. The more lines you do around these bends and curves and stuff, the more you can manipulate it. So, you know, we have an inner curve and then it bows out. Does all kinds of weird stuff over here.
All right, back to our manipulator. Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to come out or not. If it is, I, I doubt it's going to matter. This is just an exhaust port, so it's just going to get blown away anyway. We'll curve that up a little bit. I'll give it a little little detail here. So we have straight weird lines. There we go. A little bevel there. such a close area it's kind of hard to see what's going on there yeah I'd say we're okay there let's push this in a little bit the circle probably centered a little better than that zoom out and that looks pretty good I'd say all right now we have the PDF background, which we don't need or want, so I'm going to move that out of the way with my little mouse pointer up here in the top left. Select and transform, delete button, and there's our object, or our gasket, rather. So let's zoom out a little more. I'm going to use the select tool, which is this top left, select all. And now we can put our pointer right in the center, and we can move it to the bottom left, which is where the laser cutter is going to start doing its cutting. So then we'll save this. We'll take it to Laser GBRL next. Okay, let's open up Laser GRBL. All right, I moved the gasket out of the saved folder into here, so that's our gasket, gasket.svg, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, I believe. So we'll drag and drop that. Um, M3 constant power, sounds good, zero, whatever. Sounds good. I don't care. And there is the pass that our laser cutter is going to make. We are about five millimeters from the edge. Not that it matters. Just gives yourself a little bit of room on the gasket material to cut it out. I will then connect it with the laptop and have it start cutting. The laptop doesn't have the screen recording software, so it's going to be a little harder to see, but you'll, you'll see the process either way. Okay, just strolled down to the local hardware store. Picked me up a roll of this gasket material. You want to avoid doing this because you can order this stuff from McMaster. It's uh, cheaper, and you can you can determine what size you get. And oftentimes, it's not going to come in a roll. The roll is a problem because there's no good way to hold it down. It, it's always going to want to buckle up. It's it's just annoying. So anyway, what I'm going to do is trim this down a little bit to a little bit larger than the size of the gasket. Oftentimes I wonder if I can just go take a take an iron to this and iron it to get it flat again. But I don't know. But it shouldn't matter because this has these little clips. These little clips should hold it down for me good enough. Still, it's still popping up in the middle. That's that's what I don't like. Okay, we have this little piece of plexiglass. Acrylic, I don't know what it is. Some kind of acrylic. It's a nice piece of plastic. Anyway, so that's how we're going to set our, our height. Let's slide that under there. Let our laser fall. Tighten our thumb screw. And that should be all we need to do to set our, our height from the laser cutter to the material. The setup's a little messy, I agree, <laughs> but this is how us pros do it. I don't know, I'll clean it up later. I'll make a little I don't know, piece of wood, a little stand kind of thing. Mount the uh, little pump better and basically clean this up, but for now, this will be fine. 
The laser has a little shield there that should protect your eyes from the uh, UV rays of the laser, but they also give you special viewing glasses, so I'll be wearing those. Now it's a loud, little loud with the uh, air pump going and the laser fan going, but it's, it may sound loud in the camera, but it's not that bad in person. So let's send to machine and see what happens. Yeah, this, this old work computer isn't that good, but it's kind of neat because you can see the position the laser is uh, cutting in. Uh, this is only one pass. I think we're going to have to do two to four. With this thick of material, it may take up to four. Uh, sometimes it, the thinner stuff, it'll do it in two. Might take three with the air pump. I, we'll see. I'm guessing two to four passes to cut this out. It's on pass number two. Number one went pretty far. I uh, used the razor blade into the groove to kind of feel it. Once you've cut a couple of different things out, you'll, you'll be able to kind of guess how many you need to do. Especially if you're using the same material, you already know how many passes you need to take. So three was right on the cusp of being okay. Like, it would work, but four would be a lot better. That makes sense? All right, attempt number two. Ironing it. Oh, that worked great. Let's see what happens. So, it looks like it worked great. Gonna pop out the little inners for no reason. Nope, got one. So we still have a little bit of soot on the edges, so a paper towel takes care of that. Need a better background here. There we go. Now you can see it, but that's pretty good. I probably went a little overboard on the design with this corner. It looks like it should have just been a natural, better curve. I don't know how I missed that, but yeah, that's what happened. But if we lay the gaskets on top of each other, you can see they are perfect. So yeah, I need a scanner, need a laser cutter, engraver, whatever you want to call them, and you will be in business. It's not the cost of this gasket. I want to say it's like eight bucks. The problem is the shipping and then the shipping time. So let's say you something happened and you want to get done real quick, you know, busy weekend coming up and you want to take the whatever out, and you find out you need a gasket or forgot to order a gasket or, I don't know, there's all kinds of reasons, or you just don't want to order a gasket, you can, you can make your own same day. See, I'm no expert on that uh, Inkscape program, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. A little more practice, you'd be pretty good. Now, I'm usually much quicker at the program. Like, it's pretty easy, but, you know, when you're being recorded, you know, you get a little bit of stage fright and uh, you go a little slower. But for the most part, it's it's a five-minute process to make a gasket. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, don't hesitate. They're easy to use, fun to play with, and, you know, I make all kinds of stuff. Out of, uh, well, not all kinds, but occasionally I'll make something out of wood for the kids. You know, just a little airplane propeller or whatever it is they want to play with. So it has its other uses than just making gaskets, but for the most part, making gaskets have been my primary use. But that's the basics of it. Any questions, let me know. Maybe I'll make a better version of this video in the future. But if you're interested in a laser cutter, put a link below to this one. And that uh, should be about it for now. So see you later.